I've got an image here of a training session for a young swimmer. But before we sort of start applying to that, I really want to start thinking about what the principles of training are. My suggestion to you would be that the uh, principles of training are the rules of good practice, okay? So if you are training or if you are training someone else and you are trying to cause um, sort of improvements in fitness or health, these are the rules that one should follow. And the reason for that is because this is how, this is how we maximize have a look at this statement in a bit of detail. We maximize adaptations. Adaptations are those physiological changes that could happen in a person's body uh, as a result of long-term training over time. And that last little statement there is really important because part of what we're going to look here is don't overdo it. You know, get the moderation aspect of this right. So maximize adaptations over time. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to go through a series of principles that I really want you to sort of have clear. And then we'll see if Sanea has managed to apply them. So the first one is that training must be specific. Okay, and what are we asking the training to be specific to? Well, we want the training to be specific to an energy system. We'll check that in a second. We want training to be specific. So that obviously that could be one of our three energy systems. We want it to be specific to a recovery process. And it could well be the time of recovery. Think about your PC, phosphogen assisted 50% uh, recovery in 30 seconds, for example. It could be that it needs to be specific to this person's position or role in their sport. For example, is Sanea a sprinter or an endurance swimmer would be an interesting question to pose. It can also be specific to an area of the body. You know, you would expect this person is working on their shoulders, for example, when they're doing strength training, you would guess as a swimmer. And finally, uh, let's say that this, this training is gonna be specific to Sanea's smarter target. Now, we don't know what her smarter target is, but we can kind of presume it. So is this training specific? She's a swimmer, let's see what we've got. So in week one, we've got definitely there, here, definitely, we've got five sets of 10 lengths, that's sort of a, a, a nod towards continuous training, and 75 seconds. So she's definitely got the recovery built in, that looks good. What we don't know is the intensity by which she's working. So we don't know if she's working at specific aerobic intensities because there's no percentage of heart rate max. But when she does her weight training on the Wednesdays, for example, we've got three sets of 20. Uh, we've got 65% one rep max. So we know that this person's working for sort of strength endurance. So I think it's fair to say that this person is probably more of a long duration swimmer. She's probably not a sprinter. Okay, so we've got some specifics. She's probably working here on that glycolytic lactic acid system, I would suggest. Uh, and we can follow that through and we'll look at increases and what have you. So just as a first address there, we need an intensity of our continuous training. That's not there, so it's not specific enough. But our weight training seems to be really specific. Now, what we don't know is, is she working specifically on her shoulders, specifically on her back and legs? That would be interesting to know from the plan. We don't know how specific it is in this particular case. So let's take things further. One of the absolutely essential features of any training program that wants to cause physiological adaptation is that it must achieve progressive overload. And I'm gonna sort of describe this to you and then we're gonna look at it in detail. Progressive overload is literally the process of stressing the body. In other words, doing more or more often or more of it, but stressing the body to cause adaptation now that is in many ways the obvious thing if you go and train you go all right i'm gonna go and work really hard adaptation adaptation i don't know if i spelled that right um and you'll know i'm gonna go and work really really hard but the point we also want to make is that progressive overload that was the wrong color progressive overload has to be done gradually it has to be done steadily if we don't do that we are gonna break some of our other principles. So it has to be done gradually and steadily. And also folks, it has to be done using something we call FID. Now, you may well come across this as the FIT principle, I swear, but we're gonna to refer to it as FID and you'll see why in a second. What is FID? Well, FID, first of all, is frequency. We can progressively overload our training by being more frequent. And what that means is we do more sessions, we do more sessions uh, per unit of time, per unit time, okay? So let's see if Sine has achieved that in a very simple sense. Well, we know in week one, she did five sessions. She did one, two, three, four, five. And then in week two, she's done one, two, three, four, five, six. So she has increased intensity, uh, frequency, sorry. Whether that's too much too early, that's another question and we'll look at that in a second, but she's definitely increased that frequency. What about then with the I? Well, the I is intensity. 
So let's have a look at this, folks. What are we expecting to be increased? Well, it could be somebody increasing their percentage of uh, their percentage of max heart rate. So, of course, we calculate max heart rate as uh, 220 minus age in the basic Carvana principle is a more complex one um, but we can that's an intensity of continuous of fault training we could also be talking about percentage of one repetition max we could also if that's for resistance training we could be talking about percentage of 15 repetition max we could also be talking about we don't do this one very much we could be talking about percentage of range of motion when doing flexibility training so all of those factors relate to intensity let's see what Sanaya has done well, let's look, we've got here that she's doing 65% uh, one rep max in week one. What have we got down here? 70% one rep max in week two. She's got 70% uh, of one rep max. So she's increasing that intensity as she progresses and overloads this session. And the D aspect of this, folks, let me choose a different color, a blue. The D aspect of this is duration, often referred to as time, of course, the duration of the session. And this is how we change the duration. We either do more or less repetitions. We either do more or less sets, which of course would change how long a resistance training was done. We would change the recovery time. Okay, so we might do less recovery time. Now it comes back to our specific point earlier. And also, we would change the length of the overall session. Let's think about continuous training. We would do, for example, more lengths. We would do longer time in the pool. So let's see if that's happening for Sanaya. Well, we've got here five sets of 10 lengths. By the time she gets to week two, we've got five sets of 12 lengths. She, in, in essence, is upping the time of that session. So effectively, she's upping the reps. If we see it here on uh, Thursday, We've got in the first, uh, sorry, if we look here at the resistance training, the first Saturday, she's got three sets of 20 to 65%, and then she's got five sets, uh, uh, then she's got, uh, where's, where's our weight training over there? She's got, th uh, she's got three sets of 20 to 70. So with her resistance training, she is not increasing the duration. So she's not increasing here, but she is increasing intensity, which is completely reasonable, you know, to do it that way around and to do those things. So that's crucial. Now, Going a little bit further, we also need to be thinking about recovery. Now, we've already touched on recovery a little bit in terms of recovery time, but I want to be clear here. Recovery should be the following things. It should be active. You know, we want to do some kind of peripheral training. That means we're active in our recovery. Um, we can also say that lots of adaptations happen in recovery. In fact, it's fair to say almost all. So between session, lots of adaptations occur. We can also say that nutrition is key. Go and look at our other sessions on strategies with nutrition, but nutrition is key. And also critical to the adaptation process is rest and sleep. Now let's go back to Sanaya. We don't know about her nutrition. We don't know about her other stuff, but what I can say is she's got two rest sessions in week one and only one in week two. For me, that feels like she might be not achieving the progressive nature of her She might be doing too much. She might be breaking the principles we're talking about here of recovery. I think she's probably overdoing it. Now then, let's carry on. We've got two more principles I wanna to introduce to you. I wanna to talk to you about variety, okay? Sometimes referred to as type, sometimes referred to as variance, okay? All of these things are effectively the same thing. What we wanna see here is that a person is using a range of methods of training. Now we saw with uh, Sanea, she's doing both continuous and resistance, that seems reasonable. And the other thing, it's because we want to avoid boredom, okay? So that kind of monotony of training can be affected by having more variety in training. And finally, guys, my last piece of, uh, or my last rules for today, my, my last principles are about reversibility. Okay, and reversibility, the best description we can describe here is what happens when we stop training and we get adaptation, adaptation reversal. And you would have experienced this because if you've had an injury or you've had an exam period or you've felt a bit lazy for a period of time and you haven't done much work, you'll feel less fit. That's what reversibility is. And these are the causes. The classic cause is injury will cause reversal. Another cause is demotivation, which is why that variety is so important. Think about things like burnout might cause that. And one of the bits of guidance we want is a minimum, so we've got a min of four sessions per week. Why does that number matter? It matters because then there's no more than two rest days uh, back to back at any particular point, it's not possible. So 
well, it is possible actually you could have the three all in one, but you know what I mean, it's unlikely. So what have we got here? Has this person achieved that reversibility? Well, yes, in week one, they've got five sessions. In week two, they've got six sessions. My question would be, are they overtraining? Okay, we don't know this person's uh, fitness before they started, but it might be that they're overtraining. Anyway, there we go. We've got specific pressure overload with FID. We've got uh, variety. We've got recovery. And we have got our reversibility, the principles of training. Cheers.